Peace. Peace. Islam. Peace, everyone. Peace, everybody. Islam. Islam. We live. Live, uh, Moors in America. We live with the Hood Mystic. Um, Indeed. He's a, an astrologer, an occultist, metaphysician, uh, an author. He does his uh, podcast like every week or several times a week. Um, you definitely mm -hmm. need to check it out, man. He's on it, especially with astrology. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to dig in with him, and um, he's going to also ask me some questions. we both going live at the same time. If you look at the uh, card thing on here that will pop up, you can check out his channel and subscribe. All right? Mm -hmm. And for my subscribers as well, the link to this brother's channel, uh, this family's channel, is in the description. So, you know, check these guys out, the Moors in America channel. One of like, you know, they got some lectures on here that are so powerful that can completely change your paradigm. Like if you've never heard the Hakeem Bay, uh, what they didn't teach you in history class video, you've never seen it, never heard about it. You owe it to yourself and your life to watch this video. And they got a slew of other powerful builds. Uh uh, they travel. Uh, just check this page out to my subscribers if you never heard of them. So, Definitely. but thank you guys for sharing your platform with me as well. As well, likewise, it's it's a pleasure, and um, can't wait to get in here and build with you. Um, I Indeed. see a lot of people starting to come on now, so um, I mean, we could go ahead and get started if you're ready. Sure, I am. I am. Uh, I'll open the floor to you. Like any question, like you guys, you guys, we discussed the question before this live, so. Right. I'll you ask a question. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, um, like, I just want to to for you to demonstrate how like astrology ties into more science. Sure, sure. So when we talk about the historical Moors uh, that were the foundation of, you know, the rise of Western civilization uh, since 7-Eleven, and so. In 711, these Moors brought a collection of, you know, astrology, uh, poetry, prose, uh, language, mathematics. Uh, and one of those things that they brought along with them is astrology. Uh, actually, before this point, the concept of astrology in its kind of way of being taught, way of being demonstrated was never even thought of. Uh, stars have always existed, but the concept of the stars relating to the way that we live our lives is, I think, a particular channel that they got that allowed them to kind of know when to invade Spain. And you got to always remember that it wasn't even called Spain like after the Moors had left, after it had been colonized, and then they got the word Spain. But up until that, you had a whole civilization of philosophers, astrologers, and this was just common knowledge. This is just how we built. This is just how we got down. And right. so as, say, for instance, now we listen to Taj Tariq Bey and people like that, Hakeem Bey and Aline Bey and people like that, it wakes something up inside of me. And like, I can only speak for myself, you know, um, it wasn't like, you know, they was like read astrology because that's what the Moors did. It was just a whole collection of experiences and channels and different dreams and things of that nature where it's like I'm doing exactly what my ancestors did. And it's really nothing that anybody could say. Otherwise, because if you're going to talk about Arabia or <laughs> anything of that kind of any type of Muslim Islamic thought um, in the Western paradigm and astrology, you're talking about melanated people. You're talking about my ancestors. You're talking about Moors. There's no way around it. Uh, you could. <laughs> Everything else stemmed from that, you know, and everybody had different systems. But the system that we use today, uh, the system that we're talking about, is stems from like the Moors. So, Islam. Islam, yeah, we could definitely relate to that. Mm -hmm. All right. And, um, what? But it's not mainstream, though. That's the thing. It's not mainstream. So, <laughs> <laughs> we agree 100%. <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> Indeed. Hey, real quick, like, you can. Sure. Um, please come back to this. Don't forget what you were saying. But can you mm. introduce yourself? 
Because um, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm the hood mystic. Um, my real name's Kyrie. Uh, I live in Columbus, Ohio. I got a. I'm an astrologer, an occultist, an aspectarian. Um, very much a more like I'm Moorish. I wasn't born a more. Uh, so my introduction to the sciences is something that you know. I've been, you know, grateful enough to kind of be led that way or have that insight or have that, you know, spiritual leeway to be like, oh, look into this. This might be of some interest to you. But, you know, that's who I am. <laughs> and so I didn't even introduce myself. I just kind of went in. And what I do want to say, <laughs> what I do want to say about the astrology, because uh, and then I can we can be off of it or talk about something else or any follow up questions. But when you speak of it, like if I say Venus or if I say Mars or Mercury and things of that nature, what I am doing is utilizing Roman interpretatio. Roman interpretatio is everything that the Romans didn't create, but usurped and utilized in ruling over the masses. And exactly. so, go ahead. No, I said exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm yeah, it. yeah. So it's cool with me because this is how I can communicate with, you know, melanated people. But at the same time, let's not get it twisted. The idea of Roman words, Roman mythology, any Roman, anything has been taken from us. So, you know, I just wanted to add that. Exactly. Yeah. Is, um, so, yeah, we agree with that. And um, I mean, like we, we can relate to what you're saying. I mean, um, you know, we we didn't see people wearing fezzes or any of that stuff. We didn't mm -hmm. know we came into more science later on. But I think we're all Moors, you know, we just yeah have knowledge and um been through all the different schools of thoughts you know Indeed. it's like a spiritual initiation you know to to read all the different philosophies come through all the different schools you know and then mm -hmm. see the commonality in it or to find a way you know a practical way to apply this magic you know and whatever yes you're studying into your life yeah. that's really what it's all about i mean we can that's just study it all day and, and sound smart to people who don't know <laughs> you're really full of it or uh -huh. actually use it in like practical ways, you know, and apply yes. it to your life. And that's what's more powerful to me, you know? And that's yes. why, you know, we, we build them with you. Cause like, we like how you do, you know, with the, with the channel and everything and breaking it down for a lot of people is like me. I'm, I could just, that's, that's like not my um area of expertise, like astrology, mm -hmm. you know? So but, I'm just listening and learning. I will let it interject uh, because I've watched your channel before I even knew you or knew, like, you know, we've been friends, you know what I'm saying, on Facebook and things yeah. of that nature and had different ways of connecting. But yeah. this channel personally has been, you know, something that has been instrumental in my development. You understand? Like, just as a staple, right. you know what I'm saying? So I'm grateful. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm grateful for your channel and the work that you do because, you know, you didn't have to do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like if you have anything positive to say about me and my channel, like, you know, that is much reciprocated. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm grateful to just be, you know, in you guys' presence, you know, to be honest, because wow. it's like it's because it's just like one of those things like you got to really understand. I'm not I'm not I don't know much about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I don't I don't have any deep like I don't know any personal mores. What I do have is the Internet. And so dealing with the Internet is kind of tricky. It's kind of, kind of yeah. you know, so to find something that, you know, OK, I can sink my teeth into this channel. I could I, I used to be a truck driver. So your channel, I've spent, you know, hours mm -hmm. on your channel. You understand? So this whole interaction is powerful to me. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. And brother. another Indeed. thing, like we we also feel the same about you because it's like it's hard to find real people. You know, you're Indeed. illuminated. You have a whole family. You know, you actually live someplace where we can actually meet. Uh, and facts. Body, yeah. You know? yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's this Friday we're going to do the fish <laughs> thing. Right. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, that's a beautiful thing. You know, that's that, a fact. That, that's that's taking it so so. So much further than you know, just internet talking uh, to people. Oh people yeah, are talking to. Yeah. Oh, that's a fact, and that's why I'm just like you know the spirits and you know the ancestors really play a pivotal pivotal role in our development because who could have planned it? You right. know, 
you know, who could have planned it? And and we both were at different parts in the country. I was in Boston and I think you guys said that you were in Florida and we both had the conscious idea to go to Columbus, Ohio and yeah. start our families. And you know what I'm saying? That is spiritual because who told us that? You know, yeah. why? Like, I didn't, <laughs> nobody <laughs> consciously, specifically told me it'll be a great place for you to go, <laughs> Columbus, Ohio, right. start your family. Like, no, that was something that was embedded in my mind that I could not get out of. I could not stray yeah. from it. It was just something direct. And this gives it full purpose. So that's like one of those things that's just like, wow. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You got to sit back and reverence. Yeah. Right. If we told you where we moved here from, you'd trip out, man. Like <laughs> where we were living overseas for five years. Wow. Uh, I had moved my wow. family. Like, me and her. <laughs> and at the time we had three children. We just picked up and just moved to Brazil. You know what I'm saying? We're wow. not Brazilian. You wow. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like wow. we picked up and moved to Brazil in South America. You know what I'm saying? When we knew no one. And you know, we just Went there, met people, made friends there, lived there for like five years, and mm -hmm. like we moved from there to Columbus. You know, how was this? How was that experience being, you know, having a family? Like, you know, because I want to ask you guys this question because, you know, uh, me and my family are thinking about moving somewhere different, but we don't necessarily know where. But you guys actually moved as a family. And that's one of the things that scared me because I'm, I could move by myself. I feel like I can go anywhere, but as a family, uh, what was the preparation? What were some of the things that you guys did to do that? Because I know a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. Well, like um, the, the tip that we were on mentally before we moved, you know, we, we were like high deep into the consciousness and we were just kind of like tired of everything. Like we just needed to go somewhere else. And like you said, like a lot of people feel like you want to get out the country, you know, they want to leave. And that's uh -huh. like the tip we were on, but we also like, um, you know, since we had a family, we had to be responsible, man. We um, yeah. went to Brazil on a business, permanent business visa. Like we opened up a, a tourism company there in Brazil. You know what All I'm right, saying? City and so we got um, visas for our whole family. And we went there, you know, with the children. We all had dreadlocks. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like we were good in Brazil because like we were the family the rastafarian family you know That's what they call mm -hmm. it. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. we, we were cool there we, we we had to learn the language portuguese and all that on the fly um mm -hmm. we had started doing like pimsler and rosetta stone before we got there and it was like nothing like actually speaking it mm -hmm. you know right. really it looked like us that are speaking like slang you know yeah like, yeah you know it was a wild experience i i would advise everyone to travel you know mm -hmm. i don't know about moving but yeah like, but yeah you know what I'm My, saying? Yeah, just yeah. Traveling can give can widen your perspective, and um, yeah, just going to other countries. You know, like like our ancestors did. We're mm -hmm. Moors. Our ancestors, you know, were international. And I think traveling, you know, it just it opens up. It unlocks other parts of your brain. Um, um, it's it's one thing to learn about things from reading and seeing online, but not nah, actually get out there and and smell the air in Egypt or whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to actually see with your own eyes. It's take away from that. That's 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 like that's key to you know what you're saying because a lot of people on this live can really get something from that and really understanding that consciousness works at a non-local variety. That's mm -hmm. why even on a personal level, I tend to visit the mounds. You know, I, I I hit up the mounds regularly because I understand that that's i have to travel if i have to travel an hour hour and a half two hours four hours eight hours 12 hours yeah. i gotta travel because yeah. that's where the consciousness at if i'm sitting in my house on the internet that's fine you know what i'm saying i'm not knocking that but when it comes to really grasping something really making those breakthroughs you gotta really travel and until my me and my wife went to new orleans like our relationship was at a certain level. When we went to New Orleans and went to another level. Like when we go places, it, it really, I don't know you, what you guys are saying. It's right. It's a yeah. spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like to, to actually be with your mate and to experience different parts of the world or just different areas, whether it's local, whether it's, you know, throughout the city or the country. Yeah. It's like, because you're taking all this experience in and you're sharing it with somebody and that's intimate, you know, that's yeah. like true religion, you know, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you Definitely. create your spirituality 
you know, based on what you're observing. Yeah, that's moving. That's moving. That's profound. <laughs> and it's so huge, you know, yeah. just like right here where we're at in North America. I mean, there's so much here. A lot of people don't even get out and see this country, you know, like yeah. with us being gone and coming back, we have like, you know, a newfound appreciation for everything here. Exactly. You know, we want to go to the Grand Canyon and do all that stuff here. And I mean, it's like she said, it's a spiritual experience. And man. it's humbling, man, because like Brazil is beautiful. We love everything about Brazil, but it, just like everywhere else, it has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the same stuff we're complaining about here, they're complaining about there. And, mm -hmm. you know, every country you go more. to, everything <laughs> yeah, we yeah. about here, they're complaining about there. And it's like, okay, when is everybody going to stop complaining and get together and do something, you know, yeah. because we could complain forever. People are complaining from life to death, you know? <laughs> and nothing changes. Yeah. And, but I mean, you know, the science that you are learning and you're bringing to the world is so important because like you said, if you know what's happening up there, then you know what's gonna happen down here because as above, also below. And if mm. you can, you know, navigate through that, you know, you're a powerful being. Yeah, because you're like all, all the um like the nobility or elite or whatever, they're gonna have somebody who's if they're not who's well versed in astrology, you know, and numerology before they make any moves, That's any a fact. Point, you know, anything. They're not getting married, not doing any of that stuff without consulting, you know? That's a fact. Yeah, and the, a and the, the that's a reality, but I think what we're hitting on, like half of it is astrology. The other half of it that what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling is the fact of a union, of a real live union, a real live family. Like, yeah. and I think that this is the leadership. This is the wave. I don't believe in the individual leaders any longer. Like I need full transparency. I need to know everything that's going on or else like you never know who you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? And if we're going to really grow as a people, if we're really going to really get to somewhere, I'm just speaking about like, again, I can only speak from experience because I know what it's like to be a single male and to be spiritual, you know, very much of you might as well sell drugs and be a thug <laughs> then then try to be a spiritual male and single yeah. because they're going to be throwing panties at you left and right and who's strong who's that strong so you know it's very important that you know more more men and women come together and we represent like that you know what i'm saying and yep. these are difficult conversations you know what i'm saying beyond this live and then when you get like you know as we grow as a friendship you know my wife and you know you guys like i really feel like that's the direction of leadership that's the direction of how we're going to be able to change through relationships and through how to relate with one another because mm -hmm. we're teaching everything you know what i'm saying everybody knows everything but then you get with people on a one-on-one -on -one level and you talk about relating it's like you know you're talking to 12 year olds you understand yeah. what i'm saying so it's like but you know i just say like through astrology this is what I've learned. You know, <laughs> astrology helps me live my life because if we are understanding Libra, we're just now getting out of Libra. A lot of it was relationship stuff and like really showing up in the relationship and see, I don't necessarily know you guys, but I'm going to just assume that you guys are on the up and up with it with each one another and you are dealing with those benefits as opposed to times where there's been murkiness between you and it's like you deal with those uh uh i don't know negative attributes or negative repercussions or things of that nature but you know that's a part of it you know learning how to relate you know so yeah it's all yeah, that's what most people quit too they don't even know it's a grow from that and become stronger <laughs> they don't even know like you, you could have like gone to another level you know yeah yeah, yeah. So, i mean and like another, I see that. How, I see you that. Can't, if you don't like yourself there's no way you're gonna be able to love another person you know because like mm -hmm. it takes a lot of effort and you know time and you Ooh. know maturity it takes a lot of maturity to, you know, saying grow and build with another person, especially if you're not right with yourself. Like it's not going to happen with mm -hmm. the whole nother being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed. But 
indeed, but I feel as though the the uh the beacon that you guys set based upon your manifestations, based upon the things that you're able to create within this paradigm speaks volumes and you don't even have to say a word. You don't even have to explain anything. It's something that I would want to know more about. You know what I'm saying? I'm interested. You know what I'm saying? Because of the energy that you guys have created. And so, you know, this is nation building. I hope you guys realize that and understand the responsibility that you guys have created by simply loving another. Like that's like that's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to, you know, I'm tired of you. I'm gonna do my own thing. And uh -huh. maybe you get a good job. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? But now you have the opportunity to birth a nation, you know what I'm saying? Or continue a nation like where that would have never happened if you guys didn't love each other. So like that is powerful to me. I don't even know like that. That's this is just like I hear you, man. Because you hear what I'm saying? Somebody they'll they'll be talking about building and, and doing all this great stuff, and then you <laughs> find out he's like a deadbeat. You know, he's got like yeah, like, twenty oh, kids. <laughs> you know, just like some terrible, some skeletons going on. You know, it's like, dude, you should have had that down. Like, how you giving advice and you can't even master like this practical, you know, thing that like, you know, we should all be able to do. So it's like, we yeah. should be able to love one another. Yeah, like we should be able to do that and and know that this is what we should do because this is what our ancestors did to create the foundation, do you think that we would have been able to build those temples in Spain if everybody was just, you know, doing whatever? No, like no. there had to be some strong family, like bond that was broken when our parents were, you know, took out the game where they had that choice. And you're Become right. A Christian or, <laughs> or, or die, you know what I'm saying? And, and that that's like, in our you know holy quran our circle seven it says the reason why we're in this position is because we strayed away from the teachings of our forefathers and that's exactly what you just said you know we had a choice yeah. <laughs> you know it, it probably wasn't an easy choice and that's why some people came this way mm -hmm. but you still had a choice you know mm -hmm. like if we were there in that time we would have died fighting because mm -hmm. we wouldn't have went along with it <laughs> Yeah, you know? and, and that's and the majority of our ancestors did that. I that's believe, right. and, I, and, and we are our ancestors, and that's why we're here right now. That's with why we're here, <laughs> Islam, Islam, and that's Islam. Been with the with the the principles that you know we're supposed to stand on. That you know, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Love is first. You know what I'm saying? Love is first. Like, okay, you okay. Can't build anything if love isn't first. Right, and you know? and like the Most High Creator, Allah is in our hearts and we're you know taught to think with our hearts you know because like you said it's all about love mm -hmm. we have to love one one another we have to love ourselves and if we can't do that there's nothing that's going to come out of it nah nah so i think like these conversations these builds are powerful because i know that people aren't thinking on this level it yeah. like i know it's people at home on something completely different and then watching this live, like, damn, this is something really to think about, you know, moving forward. And this is the shift that we got to constantly push. And if we can get one pe one person, 10 people, you know what I'm saying? This is what we must do because there is no solution out of, you know, shifting the consciousness to, you know, proper ideals and honoring your mother and father. This is why black Negroes and colors, get, we suffer because we do not honor our mothers and our father. And that's a very difficult conversation. And that's it, a very difficult realization to know that. that uh, sorry, sorry about cutting you no, off. Sorry. It's Thank you. The fact that you are calling yourself black Negroes, color as an African-American, that right there is dishonoring your forefathers because I mean. those things did not exist. Yeah, You know, those are all recent labels that was put on us. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's part of loving yourself is knowing who you are. When yeah. you know who you are, you're going to love yourself wholeheartedly. And if you recognize who you are and you recognize your mate or your neighbor for who they are, 
then mm -hmm. you can actually love them wholeheartedly. And that's how the bill will start. Indeed. And, and I think legally self-identification is one of the first laws that are granted to you as a human being. You can self-identify yeah. first and foremost, you know, so, you know, not to exclude anybody from anywhere, but if you don't know, then you're just, if somebody tells you that you're anything, somebody could tell you that you're white. <laughs> if you haven't done the knowledge, then yeah. you have to kind of come to a realization of what you truly are. So this is not really excluded to black people or white people yeah. or Chinese people. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Nationality is a human problem. I truly believe that, you know, because Without nationality, you don't have a voice, you know? So it's just something that, you know, we have to really strive for, like, especially during this time where a lot of people are striving to get people to vote and different concerns and different issues and things of that nature. Uh, what about you? <laughs> like, what's your issue? Like, what is your, what, what's going on with you? So I think nationality would be something that, you know, could help a person. But would you guys know, like, I know you get this question a million times a day, but mm -hmm. like, is there a quick links or a, a easy way to explain nationality to a person who's never heard the concept or why it would be important? And is there a way to become nationalized in this country today? Yeah. All right. Definitely. Well, um, aside from pulling up the, the, the definition, right? Mm -hmm. let's, let's see what it actually says. Sure. All right. Okay. So we got two things, just the status of belonging to a particular nation and then an ethnic group forming a part of one or more political nations. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to take that a step even further than that. Hang on a second. All right, we're going to pull up the F because um, the, the uh, definition that I just read on um, the second part, it said an ethnic group forming a part of one or more political nations, right? Mm -hmm. you, you look up um, the ethnicity and race identification that you'll find, like, um, you could go to, if I can do a screen share, I'll just let you guys see this, gsa.gov website. Go ahead and do this right now. Okay. One website where it shows the ethnicity and race identifications for our people, right? Well, mm -hmm. not for our people, for for the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, when we look at the um, these, it says racial categories, but these are ethnic categories. Mm -hmm. if you look at what it says for the different races or the different ethnic groups. <clears throat> okay. All right. Can can you guys see the screen? Yeah, I can see it perfectly. All right. All right. For American Indian, it says a person having origins in any of the original peoples of North and South America, including Central America, and who maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment. Asian, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, India, subcontinent, then it names some other places, Cambodia, Japan, Korea, etc. Um, I'm going to read Black Glass. Mm -hmm. Native Hawaiian or Pacific, other Pacific Islander, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Hawaii, Guam, Samoa, or Paci other Pacific Islands, and then white, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. <clears throat> now, for Black or African American, it says a person having origins in any of the Black racial groups of Africa. Everyone mm -hmm. else is connected to, any, to a, a group of original people, except for yeah. Black or African American. Okay, uh -huh. so in this in this instance, right, uh -huh. the, um, the ethnic group or the ethnic tag or nationality, the label that is placed on um, our people, for the uh -huh. most part, black or African American, is um is it's not in your favor. This is a label that was created to um, strip these people of their humanity, basically, right. Uh -huh. And so when you're not self determined. You know, you don't have any power. You're at the um, whim of whoever, you know, names you. It's almost like, you know, when you name something, you own it. Mm, facts. Facts. And so, like, 
You know, if that makes sense. That makes a lot. That makes a lot of sense because the GSA, like that's straight from the government. That's straight from the horse's mouth on what it means. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so is it as simple as checking white on your racial discriminator or American Indian? Is it that simple or is it like, further or deeper? Is it something that a person would have to kind of get his own personal knowledge on? Um, I would, I would argue that in any situation you need to um, read up on your own and get part of your own knowledge on the situation and how it pertains to you. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that, that um, checking any of those boxes are going to help you because all of these (laughs) are created, you know, by someone who may or may not have your best interest at heart. Even the, the Indian American Indian label, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there, you know, there's still a status that, you know, you didn't create that was, you know, placed on you designed and, and defined by someone else, you know, that has mm-hmm. certain regulations and things on it as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, like this, that's one of the things like people don't really put a lot of thought into, but if you like dig into the Moorish paradigm and you start to look deeper, you see that there's, there's facts, there's truth in all this. I mean, there was a case, uh, I think like 1862 or something like that, where um, Lincoln, President uh, Abraham Lincoln, was um, defending a, a or not? He 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 was uh, the lawyer for someone who um, had sued another guy, his cousin, I believe, for defamation of character. Mm-hmm. And, um, he more than likely he was somebody who was passing for mm-hmm. uh, white for and right. uh, European. Yeah, for European. For right. And um, the the other person had um, accused him of being a Negro, right? And Abraham called, Lincoln. Or... Yeah, he caused his client. He, mm-hmm. he accused his client of being a Negro. And mm-hmm. um, I don't remember all the specifics, but he wound up losing out on some deals or something that he had going on. So he sued that person later for definition of character. And one of the reasons why the, um, he was able to win the case is Lincoln argued my client's not a Negro, although there's nothing wrong with having black skin. He's a Moor. He's of Moor's descent. And that was the wow. argument in the case. And that's how he was able to win. You know, wow. and the, the problem was even back then, even though we're not taught this in school, what's been mm-hmm. going on didn't even really just start with Noble Jalali. Even before he came in the um, uh, early 1900s, this was an issue. This was mm-hmm. something that was going on at the time. All right. Mm-hmm. There were even people who were arguing having that label placed on them. Um, if you look throughout history, you can't just go off of what you're being taught in the history books. But if you do your own independent research and reading, you'll see many cases where people who look like us, who were indigenous to North America, were being reclassified like during their own lifetime. Wow. That acts like um, there was this one guy named Walter Plecker. And uh, I think he was in Virginia and he Mm -hmm. started a succession of acts that wound up getting, you know, um, copied and put all over the country, throughout the country. That basically anyone who looked like us at all, you know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. They had all their tribal customs and everything. They were members of tribes and it was known, you know, that they were indigenous, you know, American descent. It didn't matter. You know, like they they could not remain. They were automatically declared Negro or mulatto, you know. And so this is something that was going on while people were alive. And I mean, even like census reports, you have people who one one decade, you know, they classified as a Indian. And then like 10 years later, you know, next census, Negro or mulatto, you know, so like, you know, there's actually evidence of all this stuff occurring throughout time. And so like, this is what's been going on. We've been getting moved out of these categories, which I, like I said, I would argue that even you know, checking Indian isn't any better for us, you know? I appreciate that. And then if you realize, like, don't that, what he just explained, make a ton of more sense that than all the Black people, so-called Black African-American people, came here on slave ships, mm-hmm. you know, from Africa, <laughs> all mm-hmm. the way back then. It's like, what? How mm-hmm. did they do that? But they mm-hmm. didn't. That's mm-hmm. the secret. They did it on paper. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And thanks mm-hmm. to Afon Bay in the, in the chat. That was the Dungy case. You know, the Dungy case. Abraham Lincoln. So if anybody wants to look that up, sorry, I couldn't remember all the specifics, but mm-hmm. 
But um, like she said, um, with with us, like with what uh, was set up with Noble Drali and the Morris Science Temple, you actually have we actually have a legitimate claim to um, to Moorish heritage, to Moorish lineage. You know, mm -hmm. when you're going through the slave trade route, which you know some people actually did come over here as POWs, you know, mm -hmm. from the continent, whether mm -hmm. they were in North Africa, other parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, you actually had people who came through the slave trade. We've seen mm -hmm. that ourselves in Brazil, where mm -hmm. um, you had the catacombs there, you know, where like underground, you know what I'm saying? Like under the street, they had mm -hmm. like the the, um, the dungeons where they wow. were putting people and, and where wow. we were at, like Brazil would be right here and then Africa's right here. So you could see how it fits together like a jigsaw puzzle and it's not yeah. that far. So like yeah. the majority actually went to Brazil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there mm -hmm. is that element that came and they even where we were at, it was a state called Bahia. They had a huge Muslim slave revolt. So it's a known fact that you had um, Africans coming over here and they were Moors, they were Muslim. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so no one's denying that. That element mm -hmm. came in. You also had trade going back and forth between the indigenous population and Africans, and many of whom were Muslims. You know what I'm saying? So this was going on even before Columbus and them came over. So that was going on. And so, like, there's so many ways and reasons why we have legit claim, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, to to our Moorish heritage and lineage. And it's a known fact. And that's how come a lot of people who are in power in this country practice Islam in secret, you know, and swear allegiance mm -hmm. to, they take the Shahada basically, swearing allegiance mm -hmm. to Allah, you know, and they wear the, yeah, the, yeah. the Shriners, you know, because they're paying homage to us. They have to pretend yeah. to be us to rule. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because it's our job. That's a fact. You know, you, you can easily Google Shriners and look at Islam and all of the Muslim things on their fezes and things of that nature. It's clear to see. And uh, 2011 um, in Chicago, I want to pull this up. Uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel bear witness um, to all of this in 22nd of December. Uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel said he made a proclamation, whereas the Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites, Hamatites, and Canaanites who were permitted by the old pharaohs of Kemet to traverse from East Africa and later form themselves kingdoms extending to the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa to the Atlantic Islands onto the present day continental Americas. And so so forth and so on. Um, January 8th through the 15th is Moorish American Week in, uh, in Chicago. And so it's like, you know, this thing is real uh, as opposed to something that a person may think that we out here making stuff up or mm -hmm. be cool. Um, I would not be here, um, you know, without people explaining this to me. You know what I'm saying? Breaking this thing down to me because I did not know about it. It was not taught to me. It was never explained to me. Um, nobody said anything about it. Uh, so I think that was intentional and why I vibrate so much with it when I'm told it, you know, it's like, you know, I really resonate with it. And so I just think that, you know, you guys really need to keep up what you're doing um, and really continue to let people know you were explaining something that you were trying to get started in Columbus um, in real terms. Are you able to talk about that now or um, no? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I mean, what, what we're doing locally, we have a uh, uh, basically we're meeting, we're, we're working towards starting a Muslim mission here. And that's basically like, in, in some words, it's kind of like having a study group, but an official study group that's affiliated with the Moorish Science Temple of America. Like we're, we're members of the uh, Moorish Science Temple, subordinate temple number 12. It's in Toledo, Ohio. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's actually my hometown. So we're, okay. uh, yeah, we're members there and we're acting chic and chic is here in Columbus, working towards getting the Muslim mission up and going. So mm -hmm. we meet twice a month. Uh, right now, it's twice a month for, you know, studying the Quran and actually teaching people about our nationality mm -hmm. because, um, for us, you know, for, for, um, so-called black Americans, um, 
Afro Latinos, Caribbean people, you know, for the most part, our nationality has been stripped from us, you mm-hmm. know? especially, mm-hmm. you know, those of us here in North America. And so mm-hmm. like that, that is a big deal for us. Like, you know, that, that label thing, the, the racial uh, ethnic categories that we were reading, you know, from the government website, this stuff is real. And there's a lot more heinous um, things connected to that that won't really get into. But yeah. I'm just saying like, it's, it's real. And that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why um, our people are out here whenever someone that looks like us gets killed, you know, saying Black Lives Matters and nothing gets done. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing, there's no, um, there's nothing on the table. You know, people mm-hmm. are going out and protesting and they're like, like okay, we're going to protest. And if you want this to stop, this is what we want in return. There's nothing on the table. Mm-hmm. Okay? You know, we, we vote. We vote mm-hmm. Democrat. There's nothing on the table, you know. We give mm-hmm. away our votes, our loyalty, our everything. We receive nothing in return. There's no protections or any of these things. And that's one of the reasons why. I'm not saying it's the only one, but that's a big one, you know? Yeah. And, um, Can I just speak I, to that real quick? Sure, sure. I really feel like, you know, appearances play a big role in how we're perceived in America and whether we have any sense or not. Even if I just, just for instance, you know, If I was to see an Indian man with a, you know, a hair wrap or something like that, and then he would just like walk up on me like, what's up, cuz? Let me get a 20 bag. And I'd just be like, (laughs) like, that would blow, that would blow me. You know what I'm saying? But if I had like, you know, a hoodie on and, you know, I carry myself a certain type of way, then, you know, and that's a hard disc- that's a that's a hard thing to say too, especially yeah. for people who want to dress how they want to dress and behave the way they want to behave. But you know, it really says something to you when you guys walk around. Because I was watching your video when you guys were in Chicago, and mm-hmm. and you were speaking on how people were responding to you guys when you were in Chicago with your feds, like you said, like the bus drivers was like Islam, you know, the tech, like y'all would just be walking places and people just knew who you were and what you represented. Um, Cause you guys speak to that because I felt like that was like, when you guys said that's like one of the things I never really forgot. Yeah. yeah it happens here that, too. Like, like it happens everywhere we go, like places <laughs> like here, Memphis, Tennessee, you know, places where you don't even think people are conscious because of all the, riffraff that's going on mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like you put well, on yeah. a turban or a fez people see you in a whole nother light and that's part of who we are as moorish american muslims like well yeah because everybody's not wearing a fez or turban so they see you you might see somebody that's thugged out and he's just like islam you know because right. he's studying on the low he's not like you know like when you you know wear it you know like a uniform so everybody knows you know what i'm saying but um speaking to that though like going to chicago it really is mecca for us it's like Mm -hmm. it was was a spiritual experience because we're there you know in the moorish paradigm in that frame of mind and we're um you know wearing our feds she's got her turban on and we're walking around and that's where it's like wow like what um the other moors who live in mecca are saying is true like you have all type like all the gangsters everybody don't matter what set what vice lord um it doesn't matter they Mm -hmm respect islam you know Mm -hmm. and so like people would think oh they're savages because you know that's what we call ourselves now we Mm -hmm. said i'm savage right Mm -hmm. but no they respect islam right Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. uh, like like you're saying with the bus drivers everyone Mm -hmm. like he made sure to make eye contact he's driving Mm -hmm. he put his hand over his eyes like islam and we see that all over and it's like wow you know and then it's such a great you know amazing american city you know but like Mm -hmm really is a huge there's a huge moorish presence there you know there's mm-hmm. at least like ten thousand or more um proclaimed moorish americans who are members of some temple there you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying so Indeed. it's like for real legit and but even like the it's Europeans known and then the nation of islam i mean it's all connected even uh-huh. europeans older europeans yeah. young, they like when they see us like in you know our turban of fez some of them actually know exactly who we are. Like mm-hmm. we go in restaurants like that, and like you know, people come to the table and just be like, "Wow, you guys are beautiful. It's great mm-hmm. to see you 
out here like this and it's like yeah. what that's what the magician <laughs> said and he you know the magician's gonna know about this stuff so he's like oh y'all are more it's like what <laughs> How do you know? Yeah, we in central ohio it's like what you know about Moors, man mm -hmm. that's deep that's deep that's crazy you know yeah. i've never heard a person utter that word in like real life like you know when yeah. i was like he's like wow i yeah. never actually seen Moors before and it's like <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's amazing, and it makes you feel good because it's like, wow, I know who I am, and other people know who we are. You know, mm -hmm. it's like that makes you want to be, you know, who you are. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's amazing because we're out here, you know, acting like other people. You know, <laughs> we're mimicking. Ooh, what we that's see. profound. That's profound. <laughs> and and Noble Drew Ali said, "Be yourself." And uh, it's hard for us to be ourselves. We don't know who we are because we're being taught by colonizers. So at the end of the day, when we find out who we are and we actually play the part of who we are, like, you know, that's real powerful. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Was profound. Like, like, like what she said is powerful. That's one of the reasons why, like after studying for years and, and studying online and all this stuff, we actually went and joined the temple because it is important to know, you know, to learn the actual customs, like most Moors and people that find this out online, they don't know we have a divine constitution and bylaws. You know, they mm -hmm. don't know that we have customs and things about ourselves. And you know what I'm saying? So it's good to actually learn this. And of course, to proclaim your nationality officially, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? To get yourself out of that status. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, that that's one of the reasons why it's really important. And like like you said, like we we don't just do this online, you know. We actually walk around, yeah. you know, maybe not every day, but you have my fez on out in public, you know. Yeah. And um, don't care if people understand it or not. I'm just doing it. Mm -hmm. and they're gonna get used to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're gonna see my son doing it too, you know. Right, right. You're gonna see your friends, and you know, have a whole group of people. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and wonder what we're doing, but just like you know. Yeah, but we have to correct yeah. it, you know. Like yeah. we have to let people know. Oh yeah, yeah. My name has an L on it, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. God, you know, and and um, no, we're we're not black, and the reason why is because you know this is a label we didn't pick for yeah. ourselves. It actually means this, you know. This yeah. messed up. Yeah. Would you want to be that? And they're like, no. Nah. Yeah. It's like okay, well, this yeah. is what our ancestors were, and and some people would know, and it's, it's crazy because I've actually had conversations with Shriners. You know they confirm this and it's like wow you know so mm -hmm. i mean it's very clear to see if you never you can ask yourself some fundamental questions like where was the first black um meeting where we all got together some delegates some representatives and said you know we are going to call ourselves the black people right. like where did that meeting take place it never took place therefore uh it's been instituted to us through census takers uh from 1790 and beyond you know to where we're at now and so and and a lot of people it is it, it's very powerful to me because where they can say they can trigger you if I say black men ain't shit. Then yeah. you kind of get an idea like you could be triggered to that, or I could say black women are angry, and then you mm -hmm. can kind of feel a certain type of way about that. But how do you know that they talking about you? You right. you remember how like when your grandma said like you know back in the day like if it ain't if it ain't about you like why are you even responding to that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like. I think that's where we're at, you know, and just having these kind of conversations where it's going to trigger people. People are going to be mad and people are not going to like this conversation, but there is going to be some younger people and some older people that, you know, this is going to make a lot of sense. And what I would say to anybody who's not hip to this or wants to know about it, you have to study it and it has to make sense to you on a personal level. I think like if, if, is nothing that anybody can do for you personally if you don't have an understanding within yourself. Um, can you guys speak to the power of understanding it on a personal level as opposed to people who want to pay, give you, I know people will be like, can I give you a thousand dollars? 
right. for you to do my nationality papers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. like, it's, it's not that commercial, right? Uh-huh. Okay, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's pushing it. Like you're going to someone as a servant. You know, uh-huh. you're begging for something that is rightfully yours. You know, yeah. so then you become the consumer or the victim because <laughs> you know there's like okay, that's the same thing that the colonizers did to you, and you're taking that same concept and you're trying to. <laughs> You know, reclassify yourself. Ooh. You know, for some dollars, right? And, mm-hmm. and it makes no sense. Yeah. And it's like you know, just regular people, real people, who's just growing up, who's working, who's you know, going to school, and who's good people, and they just don't know who they are, but they're still living the best life that they could. You know, a lot of those people are gonna be like, I don't need that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm living this life just, just like you know, we don't eat pork. And people yeah. in our family do. They're like, I've been eating pork all my life and I'm good. Why? Why should I stop eating pork? You know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, because <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it's poison. Like, you right. can't tell these people anything because yeah. they're stuck in their ways. But right. people that it clicks with, you know, like, because, like you said, it vibrates in your soul. Inside of us, we yearn, we are hungry for this knowledge. And Mm -hmm. it's not everybody, but the ones who are ready and awoke, they are attacking this stuff because it is time. Like, this is the information age and everybody wants to know. And, like, the gates are wide open. And, you know, if if you don't know, you're a fool. But they said God takes care of fools and babies. Like, Yeah, that's just that. I had a, I had a something playing with my wife at nine, but I did want to say, getting mad feedback. Is that me? Now you, you sound um, normal. Okay. All right. So, like you said, God protects fools and babies, and you know, for a lot of people, that's not a good way to like. That's correct, you know. So, when a person looks at another person and like, you know, oh. Let me do what he's doing. Let me see what they're doing. You don't necessarily know if that's a fool or not. A lot of people are background. A lot of people are there just to, you know, serve a particular purpose. But when it comes to you and your salvation, you really have to hit the books. You really have to study this. You really have to get an understanding. Uh, What's some good books for the people that can really get like, you know, um, whether it's PDF or Amazon or something, what was something for the people to right. start off? Let's see, right off the tops, we have the circle you seven know me. Quran. Yeah, I know me. I love I love books. So <laughs> like the Circle Seven Quran, like for real. Um, they okay. came before Columbus, even Van Sertima. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it really depends on what school of thought you're in because with all this information out here, a lot of us are are geared towards certain schools of thoughts. And that's another thing about us. We came through every school of thought, any, <laughs> you know, okay. we were studying 5% nation. We was, you know, into Egyptian, you know, ancient Egypt. We were, okay. you know, into um, Orthodox um, Islam. We mm-hmm. like RBG, everything that was out there, we were on. And it's like, mm-hmm. we came back, you know, after we left the country and like seen, you know, like the Islam in Brazil, they don't call wow. it Islam anymore because that that's lost. But the practices and, you know, um, the traditions that have carried on, just like where we were in Bahia, they're called Bayanas and the women wear turbans and they do rituals to the Orishas. I'm not sure if you, you know what Orishas yeah. are. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And so you can see, you know, how they're honoring the ancestors, you know. Indeed, indeed. And, and it, it's to yeah. us coming from all of the schools of thoughts that we, you know, passed through to get to that point, we seen the more science in it. And we're like, wow, it's all connected and it's all more science. And mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. it's like it was a great awakening inside of us and that made us come back to the States you know, with a different perspective. Mm-hmm. That's powerful to just be led to go to Brazil. Like, I'm still tripping off of that. Like, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Definitely have to go. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think, like, like all of our people need to go there. 
you know, mm -hmm. especially to Bahia, the state Bahia, B A A I A. We have a mm -hmm. we have a website still up. It's called uh, more Learn, about Bahia. Learn, yeah, more about Bahia. M O O R about mm -hmm. Bahia. B A H I A. That kind mm -hmm. of, and it's got mm -hmm. information on there. But, um, okay. On, on the book list though, like it's mm -hmm. something that I'm gonna recommend. It's not like on the Moorish paradigm or anything like that. But I just throw mm -hmm. that out there for everyone. It's about yeah. like tapping into the power inside your mind. And it's mm -hmm. about this guy named Neville Goddard. And mm -hmm. Really anything by Neville Goddard, but especially your faith is your fortune. It's powerful, man, because he's Ooh. teaching about the God. And um, Ooh, I like that title. That title is enough to make me want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, um, to, to learn more about like this stuff, like the if you can get those PDFs for the Journal of the Moorish Paradigm from a Hakeem mm -hmm. Bay, get mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. he goes in. He's got there's like thirteen of them. Mm -hmm. I think I've only been able to find eleven of them. Um, Have you guys ever read that book? It's a fiction book, but it is hard body. It is cold. It's called The Moors Account about Esteban Bonico. Hmm. No, no. Oh man, it, I've read the audio. Remember, I, like I said, I was like a truck driver, so I used to, I just downloaded the audio book and I listened to that joint. Man, it's called the Moore's Account. It's a fiction, but it's about Estebanico, the you know the quote unquote first um, African slave or whatever the case. He was a Spanish um, stowaway or whatever. Uh, Try to say he got killed by the Indians or he disappeared. Yeah. Yeah, but then like he was kind of, but they made a Kachina doll of him. Um, I forget the name of the Kachina doll, but yeah, it's a real big folklore about him and Native American tradition as well as you know just a regular good old U.S. history, you know. So you know he's kind of a big deal. Estebanico, the Moors account. So I don't know if y'all never read that book. Y'all at least got to listen to that audio book if y'all traveling or something like mm -hmm. that during this hard body. Yo, I just got a book too. I started reading it. It's called mm -hmm. The Moabitis. Oh, okay. Hey, Ru, uh, we don't have it right here. If you look mm -hmm. I'll show it to you. But mm -hmm. uh, the Moabitis. I started digging into it, man. Like it's it's covering all this, man. So the, okay. that's we're going to okay. get him too, that author. So check that out. And, okay, uh, okay. I want to ask you a question too. Uh, sure, sure. You know, about astrology, where like sure. um we're taught in more science that we have a higher self and a lower self. And mm -hmm. you know, like when we're all born, we're born, you know, with with the earth sign, you know, like I'm a Taurus, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so like mm -hmm. I have a question if you can answer, like, is that sign that we're born under like considered our lower self and is that what our our higher self have to balance uh i would say that when we are born we're born into a level of ignorance and so for to say like i'm a taurus and i do taurus things would kind of kind of put you in a place like being 18 forever and like you know uh you have a in Vedic astrology or our more ancient astrology, uh, it is um, discussed as the moon sign being first and your sun sign kind of being like your ego. Mm -hmm. And when they say higher and lower, I li like that's kind of like I don't like doing that. I just I, I, I view it as like kind of like a tool system or like a machinery like because i'm in tech so a lot of it is based upon you know behind the application and then the actual application so the human body is the application uh the moon would be like the motherboard and so of course the application is important that's going to get all the views and everybody's going to like you get to know you but you can do a lot like you can really boost up your application right from the motherboard or from the network level or from you know you know the transport level or just whatever level that you want to deal with yourself in a real sense like you can only do so do so much through the settings so a lot of it is like you know I wouldn't say it's lower self because it's very much needed. The application, like people are not going to be on MS-DOS trying to work a program or yeah. on 
back yeah, end of the computer right. trying to work a program like they're not going to deal with you on that level they're not going to deal with you on a psychological level they're only going to deal with you as lloyd that yeah. guy or you know that couple that i seen or you know like they don't care about your backstory or nothing like that so uh the lower self or when you when you're born like saying you're a tourist is good that's just your application but you gotta alter that you gotta upgrade that joint like it's the same as like always operating on a windows 95 like you like but you know how many people operate <laughs> on, <laughs> people, like operating on yeah. that right. first initial system that they was given you know and it's like it's awesome though yeah, yeah. and that's why i asked that question yeah. that's exactly yeah. why i asked that question because yeah. it's like yeah. when you're operating as the label that's placed upon you mm -hmm. That is considered your lower self, you know, yeah. but when you can balance or mm -hmm. overcome that and be, you know, something greater that wasn't mm -hmm. intended for you, but it was intended for you, you know, <laughs> at the right because time. You have it. You have <laughs> abilities, right. like, you know, and a lot of it is just simply what you were given and what you got to deal with. And that's what black a lot, like a majority of us, like we are limited by what our parents told us. You know, you ain't, you know, you ain't that smart or you know, you ain't going da 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 da. And this is what the earth sign really represents or the sun sign. This is what it really represents. It's just your limits or your perceived limits or the limits that you truly believe about yourself. Like I really do think that I'm ugly or I really do think that I ain't smart enough or I really do think that I ain't going never blah, blah, blah. So it's like, you know, these, the doubts, like these are something that we really got to kind of break through. Um, yeah. 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 Now, that's true. It's like a video game, man. If are you gonna level up while you're in here? You know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Another level? Or are you gonna be stuck on that, like that, that avatar that you started out with? You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'm feeling that. It's, it was something like, man, I was driving today, and I was thinking about, like, you know, how I could just go anywhere I want to go right now. Like, this thought just hit me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could go wherever I want to go, do whatever I want to do. But, you know, we may be tied down to a particular paradigm or a particular train of thought. And it's like, you know, these kinds of conversations, this kind of knowledge, it really opens you up to kind of go down a different path, maybe a path that was really meant for you. As a part, like, so you know, just one of those things, like these kind of conversations that, um, but definitely something that we have to do this Friday. We got to meet up for that fish fry, but you know, I can't wait to see you guys and meet you guys in person. You guys meet my wife, my children. Yeah, I think they're probably gonna be with us, so it's probably gonna just be a family affair. So, okay, okay, that's what's up, man. Um, yeah, yeah looking forward to it. About to go pick up our little girl. <laughs> okay. Okay. And okay. Sure. this was amazing, man. Right. I was more, it was better than I even expected, man. Like, we just got a lot in common, man. And, you know, I really can't wait for our wives to build because I, I know for a fact they're going to get along and they can really learn a lot from each other. And this is just something that, you know, we got me and you, we going to be able to build and grow because I don't got a Lloyd in my life so <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying so I'm, I'm very much excited you know what i'm saying so let's do this thing bro all right Definitely. yeah appreciate it man everybody go mm -hmm. check out the hood mystics channel subscribe Indeed. and if you ain't already subscribed to mores in america what are you doing come on come on man you <laughs> slipping bro <laughs> all right y'all peace have a good night yeah Islam, peace and love